One, two, three, two. It's your boy D Neil back with another reaction video, guys. Here we are with surprising differences between Australia and the United States. Before we jump into these differences, I need you to jump into that subscribe button, ring notification bell, give the video a thumbs up so it gets suggested. Oh my god! All right, you already know from the title, but today we're going to be talking about the differences between the U.S. Mm specifically California and okay. Australia. Been to, I've been to Cali a couple of times. Been to California a couple of times. Specifically Melbourne, Victoria. So I recently just moved to Australia a month ago. I was in fact born here and then Ooh. moved over to California when I was eight. I've had the majority of my life spent in California, but then now I've returned back to Australia. And oh, wow. I just want to talk about some differences that I've noticed in just the first month of being here. Just to put a disclaimer out there, these are all my opinions. That's my opinion! And my impressions of my first month of actually living in Australia. I'm not sure if everyone will notice these things. These are just some things that I noticed myself in this first month. One okay. thing that totally surprised me, I'm actually shocked that this happens, but on the radio and in certain like clothing stores as well, they have like the not clean version of songs mm. playing, which I just thought was like so weird. And I was like, oh my God, did they mess up? Like, you know, this, this music has like a bad word in it. Like, are they allowed to show that? Because it's like a public setting, especially on the radio, they'll have like a disclaimer that comes up like before the actual like song song oh. comes on and it's like profanity about to occur or something like that really? and i was just like oh my god i can't believe they like played the whole song because in america like there's no way it's like uh, super unprofessional if yeah. you go into a place and they're like have music like playing cuss words you know one thing i noticed yeah at some of the jobs i worked at they made me play where if music was involved if we played music it had to be like country music uh, just because like hip hop, a lot of the songs had profanity and stuff, and so they didn't really want that. And yeah, and on the radio, like you never, you always get the clean version of a song. Like, and so if they're cussing a lot, it's just gonna be a lot of blanks in the song or a lot of beeps or, but you, it's no profanity. It's no profanity. But as soon as I got off of the airport, was just how much more Melbourne spent money towards making everything look nice and what i mean by this is like when you're going along certain highways or you're going under bridges the bridges are kind of aesthetically and architecturally a little bit more prettier there's so much more of a focus on making things look more aesthetically pleasing because in california some of the freeways just absolutely suck and in australia too they have digital signs instead of like the physical signs so it would be like oh 100 kilometers per hour and then if there's an accident the digital signs would slow down and be flashing where in America oh. you're just having like a consistent you know 65 miles per hour and you have to follow that but you don't know nice. if there's a crash further down the road and whether to avoid it or not so I think exactly. in that regard Australia is like a little bit safer when it comes to the road obviously there's crazy drivers in both countries oh. but Australia yeah. has like those warning signs of like hey move to the left or move to the right because a car is broken down on that side so I think that was like a really cool thing that I noticed in Australia. Another thing- That legit makes so much more sense to have those like digital signs that let you know like up ahead, hey, you're crying. We do have some digital signs that will let you know uh, on the interstate. There are some, every every once in a while you run into a digital sign. A lot of them will be like, hey, buckle up, wear your seatbelt, don't text and drive. And then they'll be like, hey, crash coming up. But like for me personally, like everywhere I go, even if I, I know how to get there, I always turn on my GPS uh, just because it's going to let me know, hey, like there's a crash ahead. Go ahead and exit here. You know what I'm saying? This is the best route to take. Uh, so, yeah, even if I know exactly where I'm going, I know exactly how to get there. Always use the GPS because I don't want to run into traffic. I don't run in the, I don't want to run into car crashes and things like that. But I absolutely love the digital like speed limit or digital signs a lot better than our signs on the side of the interstate to like 65, 70, 75. Cars broken down on that side. So I think that was like a really cool thing that I noticed in Australia. Another thing if we're talking about transport as well would be the public transport that's offered in both countries. I was from specifically like the Bay Area. So the Bay Area has like an okay public transport, but I feel like it's pretty expensive. Like anytime I would jump on the Caltrain, I found that I would be spending like $20 if I were to go through the Caltrain. Yeah. And when I'm taking the train in Melbourne, it's like, yeah, it'll cost me about like $4.60 for like the same amount of time and travel. And they oh, also wow. have a free sex 
section of transport within the very Ooh. center of the city where when you're taking what? a tram between certain stops it's completely free and you don't have to pay at all to use that transport which i think is really really cool and really fun another thing too that's so dope i know this kind of depends on what area you're in but australia has like a coffee shop on like every single <laughs> corner or they'll have like four coffee shops like on a single corner like there's a center near me like a shopping center and i'm not even joking there's five coffee shops all within the same like 500 meters of each other it's insane but with that i feel like the there's more of like a coffee culture in terms of like sit down and drink your coffee where in america it's like you get your coffee and go somewhere else. It's like you would get a to-go yeah. cup. We're like in, a, in Australia, everywhere that you're going, if you're having it like for here instead of takeaway, like you have a, like, you know, a mug or like a ceramic mug. Mm -hmm. Most places in America, I feel like only do the to-go cup. So yeah. I found that yeah. was kind of cool. Cause it's like, you know, you sit down, you relax at a coffee shop. Rather than I feel like in America, if you go to a coffee shop, you're like studying or working. Where yeah. like in Australia here, it's a little bit more about relaxing, enjoying a coffee. It's like you sit down, you chat with somebody. So you're doing that in America too, but I feel like there's just more of a focus on it in Australia. A big part that I think was pretty different. I they love their coffee out there in Australia. And they, uh, you know what I'm saying? I think they got the best coffee in the world. I think that's the consensus, consensus that Australia has the best coffee. Which California has like the win on this would be like the weather. <laughs> Melbourne weather is known for having like four seasons in one day. So like in the morning will be freezing cold and then in the middle of the day it's like, you know, autumn kind of like fall kind of weather. And then you maybe get like, it feels like summer and it's like super hot and it's probably like, you know, 30 degrees or more than that. Then by the end of the night you're getting like, you know, spring and it's like raining or something like that. Where I feel like the weather in California is like super consistent every day. Like if it's going to rain, it's going to rain for the entire day. But if it's yeah. going to be sunny, it's going to be sunny for the entire day. Melbourne, at least, it's like so different every day. So because of that, you have to be like rest and ready for any single <laughs> weather pattern that could come on. You have to bring like a jacket or like sweatpants, even if you know that it's going to be like a sunny day, just in case. The weather is so unpredictable. <laughs> as well as talking about weather too, the sun is... Always be prepared. So much stronger here in Australia than it is in California. In California, I feel like if it's a sunny day, I can go out and get away with not wearing sunscreen. Where mm. here, I will 100% get burned if I don't wear sunscreen mm. and it's a sunny day. The UV is like constantly super high. The other day for mm. my walking a half marathon video, I didn't put enough sunscreen on my arms and I literally got the worst watched hand ever. I don't know if it really shows up on video, but like, yeah, yeah I'm not, I'm, I didn't see anything. Definitely wearing your sunscreen here in Australia is so important. They have like a whole bunch of campaigns about uh, protecting yourself from the sun because there's a really high skin cancer risk by not wearing sunscreen. Now we're talking about slang. I'm probably gonna do a whole video on that where like I interview my family about the different kinds of slang that they use. But obviously so there's cool. a lot of different kinds of terms and things that they call different items in Australia. So for example, a big one, is flip-flops in california are called oh, thongs here but thongs in california mean like underwear with that yeah. there is a lot of different slang and like sometimes when i hear other people talk about you know different words that i don't know the meaning of i'm like so confused on what they're talking about you know i'm slowly starting to catch up to what the slang is and on my last video i called one of those like clip-on bags that you use uh for walking and stuff i call it like a fanny pack but yeah. apparently that's like like not a good word they call it a bum bag so some people commented on my last video about calling it a bum bag so that's what i'm going to be calling it now another yeah, I've heard about that. I've, I've heard I've heard the slang that she's talking about in this video. I got it. The thing so here far. too is that drinking tap water is like completely normal, and like most people drink their tap water in America. Like most people are using like a Brita filter, or they're yeah. somehow filtering their water or using bottled water. But in yeah. Australia, it's totally normal to yeah. drink your tap water, and most people just do it anyways. Okay, let's see how long I can go before my. I definitely don't trust the tap water here. Uh, where I'm at, I no 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 go to tap. Battery dies. Also, I feel like the money makes so much more sense here in Australia. Every single bill has its own color. The only part that kind of confuses me is when it gets to the coins because there's like a two dollar coin, a one dollar coin, and then all the cents. But they don't have penny. If you're charging yeah. someone for something and it's like twelve ninety three, you would then round down to 90 because there's only like the five cent coin and not like a penny so that was like something that i had to get used to at least because i'm like wait do i have to like round like i have to like think a little bit extra when i'm giving people change now i feel like i actually care a lot more about coins because there's like the one dollar coin and two dollar coin 
where in America, like the highest coin that you really have and that you use frequently would be like the 25 cent coin, like a quarter. Yeah. Because of that, like I don't really care about change, but like here change actually matters because it's worth a lot more. Lastly, getting Lessons. used to like Celsius instead of Fahrenheit was something to get used to because yeah. people talk about like, oh my God, it's so hot. Like it's 30 degrees. To me in Fahrenheit, 30 degrees is like freezing. Like it's below freezing. It was like definitely something to get used yeah. to and I have it, to think. It is below freezing at Fahrenheit. Like, okay, a 20 degree day, like, what am I gonna wear for a 20 degree day? So definitely having to get used to like that Celsius change. And I'm kind of starting to get kilometers as well. I feel like understanding like how far a kilometer is, I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, it's a little bit less than a mile, but like not half, but like a little bit more than half. And, like <laughs> trying to understand that as well has been a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. The metric system makes more sense. Like we all know that. So yeah, yeah. I think I might make a part two yes. for more information on the differences between Australia and the US. Obviously I've only been here for like just over a month. So I don't know everything about the country, but I'm really excited to like get to learn more and find more differences. I think I'm gonna make a video about slang as well. So stay tuned for that. Now, before my camera, camera dies I wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching my video and if you like seeing videos like this about Australia definitely subscribe so you can watch more videos that I come out with my posting schedule right now I'm trying to post every Thursday and Sunday <laughs>